Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at how we navigate Xcode using storyboard-based iOS development. I've got a quick little certification practice project I'm working on right here so we can see how that's put together. We're going to take a look at the actual structure of the um, Xcode environment, see how it's all put together, the different windows and systems we use to actually go through and navigate it, and how we can make that happen. Um, over here on the left is where we have our navigation pane. This is the uh, main place where we're going to do a lot of our structural uh, parts of our project. As you can see right here, we've got a series of icons that we deal with over here, and this is open and closable with command zero and either one with that. So you can open and close it with command zero. It'll either open or close depending on what the status is of it already. And you can see we've got that right there. We have individual icons across the bar here are the different um, navigation panels we used as we go through this. The first one's one we use the most. It has this cute little folder icon right here. It's the project navigator. This is where you can see the actual structure of our project where we see all the files we're working with. And it's a great little tool. Uh, we then have our um, repository one, which is where we can actually see our our source control and we can see all the information on here. If I click on my repositories, this one doesn't have any repositories in it, so there's nothing to actually take a look at. But if we're working with source control, aka git slash github, we can see all of our commits and repositories in here and it's a great way to actually track through that. You can also do direct integration using git or github right here and you can have it directly linked inside Xcode. I like using github separately from my actual Xcode or um, iOS development environment, but you can have it directly linked right inside here. The next one is the bookmark navigator. I've never used it. I don't have a good use for it at all. I can even find a good demo for it, but hey, that's right there. However, the next one, the cute little magnifying glass, is our search icon. This is fantastic. If you need to find some part of your project, you can easily go through, type the word right here, blah, 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 right there, press enter, and you can find it. You can also do the replace on here as well. And so you can change it from find to replacing. You can do a quick find replace. So say, for example, oh, I call it this, but I really need to call it this throughout my thing. And it's not quite a refactor job. It's just you're um, replacing maybe some text on there. And that's a great tool for that. So the search navigator quite um, helpful. And this is command four. Um, we can also go back to that original project navigator command one because each of these have the um, command index based sequence with it. So command one is the one I use the most. Then we have back to command four. We can search for that. Now this is one you're going to see all the time. It is our issue navigator, aka the error screen. Now right now I only have some warnings right here because I have a really bad layout because I'm just throwing some code together. But uh, this uh, issue navigator is where we see the errors we'll work with. It's a great thing to find that. Take a look at some of my other videos. We'll be doing some iOS test-based development with this. We can actually do some testing of our iOS code. But right now that's just where you actually would see the test and how you'd work through that. Command 7 is a uh, debug navigator. This is where you can see the stack trace with that. It's a cute little spray can icon right here. And so you can see that when you're actually doing debugging, you can look inside that. And it's a great tool to work with. You also use the uh, debug navigation window down here to go along with that as well. Um, we have our breakpoint navigator right here. As you can see, I don't have any breakpoints right now, but if I go over to my um, code right here, if I just simply click on a line number right here, boom, I get that cute little breakpoint. In this case, line 54, it shows up right here in my sample action. And so that's where that will show and we can actually use this to navigate to it. So if I were in, say, for example, a different part of my screen and I click on this, it'll take me right to my breakpoint right here inside my editor so I can uh, see where that's happening. A report navigator. I don't use reports for anything right now, but you can easily see what's going on as you try and build or run your code. You can see the results that are happening with that. It's a great tool for that. So that's all over here in the navigation pane. And that's again with command zero will open and close that pane. I usually keep it open because it's quite helpful and I almost always keep it on the project navigator as the default screen for that. We have our editor window next and so I click on any of my screens inside here, I get to me my um, editing window for it so I can do my editing code. And that's where the editor happens. It's a great place to get that. As you can see, I've got my highlighter here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that breakpoint for that um, right now. But we've got my basic editor window section. You can use some great navigation right here. You can use the um, go directly to screens right here using the breadcrumbs approach right here and if you have methods based you can use that right here you can also use navigation components inside here you can actually get to the mark system and it's a great way you can actually go through and get some great navigation on that as well using the breadcrumb structure right here to go through and look at the different components you can go through all the projects go to the different files etc using that breadcrumb system it's really quite helpful and cool so that's a great thing to use for that for the text editor for all the code with interface builder we have a bunch of different parts we actually have to talk about so interface builder we have our document outline right here we have the actual interface builder where we can see the screen. We have inside here, we have our assistant editor, which I'm gonna close out for right now so we can have that not available, so we can just simply just see that. And so we can see right here, we have all of our different components. Now, because I'm working with the interface builder, I also have my inspector pane I'm gonna be working with. So if I click on anything inside my interface builder, I can go to my inspector pane. I can get the properties information about this. I can go over here and get my um, lovely uh, time changes on that. I can do the quick help as to what that thing is. Wonderful thing. This one's really helpful. It's my identity inspector. So if I'm gonna use a custom class, aka I have a file over here in my project that's linked directly 
to that. That's specified over here in Identity Inspector. The Attributes Inspector goes over here and it's like, hey, these are the attributes about this individual thing. So I can say, oh, here's the image I have selected for it. I can click on this drop down. I can choose any of the things that are specifically listed already or any of the built-in system components. So I can use that right there. So I can use that and access that directly right here without using code. We have our um, Size Inspector. I can say how big that's going to be. And I also have my Connections Inspector, which is really helpful when I'm looking at how to link things together. And we'll talk more about that as we go through. Um, over here in the document outline, we've got the document outline is a hierarchical uh, structure. I can see all the different pieces that are inside my actual view that I'm working with. As you can see, I'm in my cactus view controller, but also my other view controller, I can access that and it's got its own hierarchy right here. I can click on the down triangle and I can go look at the different pieces that are inside that. So I can see all those pieces right there. And it, especially for things that are not necessarily visible when we're working on things, this is a great way to access those components so I can actually see the pieces that are inside that. And I can access that and reference it directly right here with the code, with the associated inspectors right here. And that's a great tool for that. Now, one of the really cool things when we're working with iOS development, when we're talking about storyboard, uh, storyboard development, is we have to use a approach to link the uh, storyboard here to our code. And we do that with the assistant editor. Now, if you're using the new version of Xcode, aka anything at post 11, you're going to go over here up to the editor window, you're going to do the assistant editor, control, alt, command, shift, enter um, to access that window. Or if you just click on it right there, it's really quite easy. And it links to it right here. And you can tell you've got the right one because you have the cute little link circles right here for the automatic type. And this tells you what is linked with that. So right here, I have my my other screen view controller and it's linking right here to this and I can tell that's the right one because I go over here to my identity inspector and that class right here is specified as that so it links it right here so I can link that directly to it so I can pull it up if I click over here my cactus demo view controller automatically and correctly changes to the cactus demo view controller and so I can see those connections right there we can also see that I have these cute little wells right here that's a filled in well and I can see that it's connected to something. So this IB outlet links to this specific thing right here. This one links to that one. This links to that one. This links to that one. I scroll down right here. I have an IB action, a method or function that links to that button. And so I have those linked right here, that uh, filled in well. I can also go over here to my connections inspector and I can see those same references right here and how they connect to that. And that's how you can actually go through and see those connections using Xcode. And so this is just a quick little way you can actually go through and look at that and navigate the Xcode environment. The last thing we want to do when we're talking about navigating Xcode is the idea of debug. We exit with the command shift wide open up the debug environment. And if we were to go ahead and debug something right here, it'd show up over here in the debug window. We have two different side windows that go along with this. I can open and close those windows as necessary, but we'll often have them both open. And then we'll see on that more detail when we do the actual debug instruction. We can go through and have that happen. And again, that's just command shift wide open and close that window to get access to that. But that's just a quick little navigation of the Xcode development when we're working with Xcode with storyboards, how you can actually navigate that structure and see what those are. Take a look at some of my other videos to go more detail on how we can actually go through and work with this project. I hope this is helpful. Cheers. See you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.